Chris Lee and Blake Lovell of Southeastern 14 here doing an emergency pod. South Carolina has gone to Lexington and stunned Kentucky, Blake. I mean, we went over this in the preview. We thought this would be a bounce back game for the Cats. My goodness. I mean, the, the, the lines that the computers had. Let me just read you some of these, okay? Ken Palm had it Kentucky in 17. So did Bart Torvik. ESPN's BPI had it 22, and Sagarin had it 19. Carolina just got obliterated through the floor in Knoxville. What, what is this that we're watching? Are you kidding me? I think we know exactly what this is. This is the well, end of an I era. Well, I know, but <laughs> like yeah, you cannot well, come I mean, back if you from can, this. If you like, can find forty-six million dollars, how do you do that, Chris? You can't come back from this. It's not. You can't. <laughs> like this is the what? This is one of their worst losses ever statistically. What have we said about South Carolina? Look the number up. South Carolina was two fourteen. You know, some people don't like Ken Palm. That's fine. But if we use that as a as a barometer of where South Carolina was heading into this game. They were 214, okay? Past decade, I looked up the stat here. Only two teams have finished worse than, two, worse than 214th in the SEC in Kempom in the past decade. That was last year's Georgia team and the 2013 Mississippi State team. Even the O for Vanderbilt team did not finish that low. Um, so statistically, right, that tells you something. Does it not about where South Carolina was heading into this game? <laughs> they were 251 offensively. 325 in effective field goal percentage, 288th three-point percentage, 345th free throw percentage, 312th two-point percentage. What do you say? I mean, it's one of the worst losses in Kentucky history, and we're not. If you're joining in, which, trust me, I know there are going to be some new people joining in given everything that, that is on display here, but we're not hot take guys. But the fact is no, the stats are what they are. Like, this is the kind of game you could not afford to have through Kentucky. And I personally, in my opinion, think this is a game you cannot come back from if you're John Calipari. Um, I just think there's no there's no excuse for it. Like, what is your excuse for losing this game against the worst well, team in the SEC this year and statistically a team that was on track to be one of the worst in the SEC in the in a decade? Like I'm, I'm going to bring something back. We'll see if you can guess it. It's our, it's our friend, the bag of shame. Um, and I'm doing a horrible job of getting in front of the camera. I can't even see it now. But here you go. We brought the bag of shame out last year because yours truly picked Kentucky to win the whole tournament. We know what happened against St. Peter's. Okay, that that was first of all on a neutral floor. That was not in Rupp Arena. St. Peter's was higher in the computers than the South Carolina team. You said Ken Palm, 214. It was 274 in Bart Torvik, 194 in Sagarin, 248 in BPI. 274. 274. And I think Torvik is the one that, as I look at it, is probably the least preseason biased. So his, his is probably closest to what is actually happening, is my guess. That's just me. How well, how does this – well, I'll tell you how it happened. What, the thing that stood out to me is I thought that Carolina beat them on the glass. That was a lot of where this happened. And, of course, Kentucky couldn't shoot threes, even with Cedre Frederick back. Michi Johnson had the game of his life. Uh, those are explanations, but still. I mean, look, South Carolina season high total in three-pointers and three-point percentage. They go 11 to 20. They did hit some shots that they're probably not hitting in every other game this season. They scored as many points at halftime as they scored in the entire game against Tennessee. <laughs> All those things combined. And this is how it happens. And here's and someone someone pointed this out on Twitter, right? I mean, think about this. If you want to know where Kentucky's offense is at, all right, there's only one number you need to look at here, and it's not the one you're probably thinking of. Kentucky had six turnovers, only six. And they just lost the game to, to again, a South Carolina team that statistically was the worst in the SEC and all these other things. They only turned it over six times, meaning they had every chance offensively to put themselves in a position to make a run to win this game. And it didn't happen. Um, 
for, once again, there, there's no excuse for it. And we, by the way, there's a lot of people in here and, and, you know, a lot of new people, perhaps we react to every game in SEC bass, every single game that's played. We've done a reaction video on. This is not new in that sense. Like we, it's just we give our thoughts on. We do most. It's just yeah. re- after the fact because this one is. I think you're going to see this one is more significant than any other this season, just based on what I think the ramifications are going to be for Kentucky basketball um, in the immediate future. So, can can you pull up the Matt Jones tweet? Um, you talking is, about? I the, think it's the, been re. The person the, getting they thrown pulled the out. fan out of the building. Yeah, yeah. There was a lot of other people I think that had that okay. on there. I'll see if I can find it. But, but yeah, I mean, if you're on Twitter, which we do have a lot of people on Twitter joining in here, um, yeah, I mean, they threw someone out for saying, "Please go to Texas," on the uh, the thing, and um, I'll find it. You just we can yeah. talk. I mean, that's that's just it is what it is, right? But well, here's. Here's the question, and I know you said it's got to end, and I get it, but how do you get out of a $46 million contract, what they owe him? It's something very close to that if that's not it. Well, hold on. Someone yesterday put out that that's not exactly true. Um, okay. Yeah, um, I'll have to find it, but I, someone put out yesterday that's actually not the case. Um, I, I will. You'll have to give me a minute to try to find this, but it was there was a report out there yesterday that said something about the contract details so and barry's getting very antsy over here by the way he's going to want out soon so um i'll I'll try to find it but just continue so well hats off to south carolina michi johnson was tremendous he was an ohio state transfer that didn't do much you know south carolina is is an awful offensive team but it's got about four guys who can score uh, they stepped up tonight. Brown fouled out late in the game. He's one of those kids who can score. Uh, and they got the kid they needed at the foul line late, too, which helped. Carolina is a dreadful foul shooting team, but they got the the 79% shooter at the line late, and, and I've gone blank on his name. Well, by the way, let's not ignore this, okay? What's what's on the screen here? Like, I mean, let's let's not ignore that, please. I want to make yeah. sure that's clear in our conversation. Um, yeah, they do. Just said a they played ago, harder tonight. Well, they outplayed Kentucky, first of all. But second of all, like they they came to play after a game where they just got beat by they got beat by more yeah. than they scored against Tennessee. So let's let's not SC Scout guy a regular in our live streams. Let's let's make sure that's clear too. Well, and, this and is look, obviously they, gonna be a lot almost, about Kentucky, but yeah, let's just point that out. So I saw them a week ago at Vandy live. They played hard. They took Vandy to overtime. Vanderbilt hit a bunch of free throws and beat them. Um, they they don't do that, and thing. yeah. Well, anyway, I mean, yeah. Hat hats off to them. This was a this was a program that was not in good shape. We talked in preseason about how they're returning guys outside of Hayden Brown, and he's not a returning. He was a transfer from was it the Citadel or Furman? I can't remember which. But he had he had scored. He'd done good things in the Southern Conference, but the rest of their guys had not done much. I think outside of Brown, I don't know that they'd had a guy that played over 20 minutes a game last year. You throw in Jackson, who's 17. I mean, what a what a job by Lamont Paris. Yes. Um, I'm going to pull up the suite real quick, and not the Matt Jones one, another one that is essential to what I'm trying to say, but I just cannot get it to load, and our technological issues are nothing new for all the new people out there. Um, this is something that happens on the regular, it seems. But um, let me see if I can get this pulled up here on the contract situation. Uh, let's see. So uh, there's this. So this By is the, the way, Jacoby. Was- Jacoby Wright was the the player I was trying to that I blanked on his name that hit all the foul shots when they needed him late. So here's you see the tweet here I'm talking about, right? This one that came out yesterday. Yeah. Now I can't read the story. I don't know if it's under some kind of paywall or something or what but about cal's contract yeah i'm looking at it he's free to leave kentucky if he chooses um okay <laughs> i think a lot of people would like well him to leave right you now. see the sentence before um, that though is what i'm saying i i, I don't know like I, i'm not acting like i know the details of cal's contract i don't like i don't have the details on this contract but um what does guarantee not a buyout mean 
exactly. That's I don't I don't know the specifics on that. I'm just I'm pulling up information here that's maybe relevant to the conversation. But um, if anyone wants to treat tra- tweet at Travis Branham, you can do that um, to ask those questions. But I think it's would, would that mean would a buyout mean what another school has to pay to get him out of that? And a guarantee would mean he's going to get that whether he's yeah Kentucky's I, coach or whether he's fired. It's again, these are questions we will we will certainly look at and ask before we kind of look at more stuff here moving forward. But um, that will be a topic of discussion without question over the next short while. Um, Yeah. So I don't know. I mean, yeah, I I don't even know what to say right now. Like it's if you're just joining in, by the way, we, we kind of touched on early on, but like we kind of pointed out, if you look at kind of the numbers, just a, I mean, it just it, the, the loss itself will rank historically among the worst in Kentucky history, in my opinion, if you just look at kind of the, um, the setup um, in that regard. So, yeah. Remember, it was about this time last year, and we'll talk about this in a couple of days because huh. Kentucky and Tennessee yes, are going to play this weekend. Um, do you remember what Kentucky did in Knoxville about this time a year ago? I don't remember anything a year ago at this rate, but I don't know. I believe that's the game that they went and won by about 30 points. Am I, am I getting the outcome of that mixed up in Knoxville? They won by 30. <sighs> Maybe not. A, no, no, it wouldn't no. have been in Knoxville. But they they, they won it at Rupp by 30. They won it. Rupp right, right. They, Rupp. They okay. You're right. Yeah. Because nobody won in Knoxville a year ago. I'm, but yeah. I, I'm, I'm thinking in that game, cause that was about this time a year ago, January 15th. That seems like eons ago. Yeah, and I know Kentucky, if Kentucky had puts some... 107 on Saturday. Then, oh my goodness, you better better do that. I don't know what. Like, better check for see what they're eating before the game or something. I don't know, but yeah, that, that's not happening. So, um, yeah, I mean, look, Kentucky fans. I, the consensus, I, I think, is there. Like, it's. I said before, I just I don't think there's any way you can come back from this. This is just, you know, th- this is on a different level when it comes to the significance of the loss. And this is just a different animal here. So, <laughs> I mean, just think about it, Chris. Think about it. They, they got blown out at Alabama. They just got destroyed. And then they couldn't come out and get up for, you know, a game that they had to have. Remember that discussion we had? It feels like. Ages ago, it was a couple. It was two days ago. Kentucky and NCAA yeah. tournament team right now, and they <laughs> had nope. CJ Frederick back too. That that's their best shooter, and that's the place where they've one place that they've been struggling. Well, I think Antonio Reeves is still their best shooter. That's just my opinion, though. I don't. Well, but uh, I mean, I, I Frederick was really good at Iowa. Um, well, that's was a long time ago too. Percent. But yeah, but he, it's not like he lost it. I mean, he hit and he did hit a big three no, for the I'm not late. saying he lost the game. I'm just pointing out, like I, I think their issues are bigger than him. That's my point. Like I, no, no, no. I, that's I mean, what I'm. What's what I'm saying is like they got yeah. they had the pieces back that you would think that they would need to win a game like this. I mean, you wouldn't yeah. think they would need him, but my point is, three point shooting's been an issue. You get maybe your best guy back tonight, and yeah. it didn't matter. Well, yeah. I mean, it's um. I I asked the same thing that I've asked in many previous videos. Um, and yeah, I mean, the stat is what it is, right? Third third win all time in Rupp for South Carolina. Um, Last one was 08 or 09, I think. Yeah. I believe that's what the graphic said. What, you know, what, what is Kentucky's game plan? And that's the question we've asked a lot this season. Um, you know, when they come out, what's the idea? the thing that you can identify with Kentucky that they are just significantly better than you in this area. And why I think you, they were almost set up for this kind of result is that there is no answer to that. Like that there is no answer that I can look at with Kentucky. And you and I have talked about this a lot, but I know there's a lot of new people here outside of, if you want to say the offensive rebounding, probably, you know, I don't know that there's anything that you just look at with Kentucky with how this team has played this season or or how their approach to game planning and all these other things from the coaching staff standpoint, you know, it's just, what do you, 
what is it that you look at this team and feel like that really worries me? And not just from a personnel standpoint, right? Personnel, we, we know, Oscar Sheepway, and yeah, you can look at it, oh, that's a tough tough thing to do there, and we got to figure out what to do with with this guy, Casey Wallace, and and so forth. But uh, yeah, man, I just don't, I don't know. So, well, Casey they're a good Wallace rebounding team. Three and, shots isn't good either. And, so, yeah, well, I'm just going to say they're a good rebounding team, and Carolina beat them at that tonight. Well, I mean, I said this many times before. You know, I'm I'm not the not the guy that calls for coaches firing and all this. And there was a point where I I talked about Cal and felt like maybe he wasn't getting the you know credit he deserved at times. But like we are we are past that at this point, and I, I don't know what they what they're doing sometimes. And um. This team is just, uh, I don't know. Like, I, it starts at the top. I mean, let's just call it what it is. Like, you, you know, if we have to start dissecting the problem, you have to start at the top. And what the expectations are at Kentucky, this is a loss that is simply unacceptable. And the loss at Alabama was unacceptable. The, you know, so, so I just think that, but this is a different animal here. Um, so yeah, I don't, I don't know. What, you guys can take the conversation wherever you want in the comments. Like you, you let us know questions, uh, comments. We'll, we'll talk about it here for a few more minutes, but we got other games to watch, but I mean, it's, I, I guess I said before, I just don't think you can come back from this one. I think this is, I think this well, is it. The, and I, I don't know, but let's see. You see this in sec football sometimes, like when a situation collapses under its own weight, You've seen that at Auburn and at times in football. You sort of saw it at Florida two years ago with Dan Mullen. And no place is there a white-hot spotlight on a program, football or anything, like it's basketball at Kentucky. And the first media timeout tonight, he was getting booed. Uh, you saw the signs they were kicking people out of the gym. That's just one that I wonder if this takes on – a life of its own basketball aside, if that makes sense. In other words, just it, it gets so nasty and morale gets so bad that it it just goes bad under its own weight. Well, to me, the way they play in this game, you know, morale was clearly not high. Um, you know, in terms of heading into this game, and, and we knew that, but I think just how it played out. Let me, let me mark with these comments here because I know there's a good question we're going to bring up in a second. Um, yeah, I mean, I <laughs> I don't even know what, what you say. I mean, look, and by the way, everything I'm saying, I'm not saying John Calipari is going to be fired tomorrow and won't coach a game for Kentucky again. But if you're talking about looking ahead, right, this to me is the one that you may look back on and say, I don't know this this may have been the, the point that broke everything. Like, I mean, and look, it already felt like it was broken, right? But like this, to me, is the, the kind that can, where both parties go next, you know, whenever next is, this is one of those games you look back on. And you, like you said, you see the fan base reaction in Rupp Arena, you see all that kind of stuff. It all kind of comes to a, a head eventually. And I just think this is kind of one of those games. I want to I want to bring up this question by Pong Barbecue. And look, there, there's a combination here, but but as the SC Scout guy pointed out, this South Carolina team, like this, doesn't go along with that discussion. I don't think like South Carolina was not catching up to Kentucky heading into this game. Like they were not, even as Kentucky has struggled, right, Chris? Like they were not on the same level like this was still a very wide gap now is the rest of the league as a whole catching up to kentucky of course it is um we've seen that auburn's won the league alabama's won the league tennessee's won the league right so i mean yeah arkansas i mean keep going like you know there's a lot of teams that are making that have made big moves over the past five years or so and it's a different era with transfers now it's a different era in terms of can you just win with freshmen so yeah, I mean there there's uh, NIL, yeah. I mean that's that's the scout guy brings a good point. Like NIL is something that's in play now, right? So 
that in a sense should play in Kentucky's favor, you would think, but it also gives a lot of other programs options and it opens up their possibilities a little bit more to be able to get this guy or that guy. And let's not ignore too. Look at the class Kentucky has coming in next season. We've talked about that a lot of the past. It's a weeks. monster. Yeah. It's an unbelievable class. But if you're a Kentucky fan, what are you saying right now? I've heard that before. And I heard this team could be, you know, and, and look, the season's not over. I get it, guys. But it's if you just look at how this and and you know what? Bleed Blue's got something here that I think is worth bringing up. And I'm not saying that I, you know, am going to completely subscribe to this. But that job, <laughs> could it burn somebody out? Of course it can. And could we be seeing that? Certainly. Uh, certainly a possibility. So yeah, the loss he's referring to, that's when they were 38 0 and lost to Wisconsin in the last final time four. they made the final four. And as wow. Patrick points out, South Carolina's been to a final four more recently than Kentucky, if you really think about it, right? So goodness. I mean, it's just it's a wild, it's just a wild development. And um it's a good good question on this one. I I I'd have to look them up other teams but as of right now i'd say i mean it has to be right because i mean because your second part of the question guru what was the the team they're bringing he back had... the national player of the year chris i mean man. well the the thing that we pointed out preseason was you never saw a team you, you, you rarely see a team and you especially don't see it at kentucky that brings back a national player of the year and a point guard who'd had what well over two thousand minutes in his career 2,500, yeah. something like that. Xavier Wheeler has played a lot of basketball. You, you had Frederick, you had Reeves. They had track records at places before. I mean, it wasn't one of these teams where Cal's had where you look up and you're like, okay, none of these guys have played ball before. Let's see how this looks in late February. This was completely different. By the way, to bring this up, yes, I, I think I didn't expand on that. We're talking more about the success of programs in general, not just winning the SEC. I mean, Arkansas is the last the last two seasons. Arkansas got to the lead eight. You know, they're they're they've been the last man standing. So that's kind of more of the the point I was trying to make. Yeah, I didn't make that specific on actual winning. But them. you know what? You saw the war. I did. I just for fun, I'll go back and say, all right, let's look at the last five, ten, fifteen, twenty seasons and see how teams have done. And over every five year increment that I went back, and I'm sure it would just keep going on and on as I went back 5, 10, 15, 20, 25 years, even the last five, Kentucky still had the best record in the league during the regular season, even with that COVID year that dinged them a bit. So I know that the hardware has not been there and look, this is a, this is a different conversation than the one tonight, but he still had been winning at a pretty high level. I think what prompted the thought was, the question a few questions ago about is the rest of the league catching up with them? Well, the rest of the league is getting better in basketball. Look to the state of Alabama, you know, for yeah. a good example, look to Knoxville. But my point is, even as they had slipped a little bit, they, they still had the best record in the league over in league play the last five years coming into this season. By the way, we didn't mention this earlier, but I was, I was going to wait to see what Kyle said. We did mention case and Wallace only taken couple shots right but he did have i think i don't know if they mentioned they said it was back but it, it wound up it was back spasms is what cal said in his press conference afterwards um so yeah so that that's worth noting so apparently back spasms were in play there um i mean look if you're on twitter you can go see cal's in his press conference right now there's a lot of interesting question or interesting responses i suppose but yeah is that is that what okay well I didn't see this quote, but um, I saw a lot of the other ones. But he just said they're on a mission. Started a few weeks ago, but um, yeah. Well, I mean, I look as we said, Chris. You know, you can. Some people may say, "Well," and I don't think there's many people that would say this, right? But you know, getting on Cal and all this other stuff. But when you're when you're in the job you're in, when you're paid the amount of money you're paid have a lifetime contract you know i just criticism is you're open to criticism and i think there is a lot of criticism to be had right now with where the the cats are at this moment so 
Uh, Gary, Gary's one of our resident Gamecocks fans. Congratulations. Great night for your team. Um, yeah, I mean, maybe the pieces are fitting together a little better. They, they look great in Knoxville, although Tennessee can do that to teams. Um, but I mean, we, we looked at it before the season. We went through every roster with a fine tooth comb. We felt like pretty decidedly they had had the least accomplished team coming in that they had gg jackson and that that's a lot but in terms of what these kids had done before them michi johnson didn't get much of a chance at ohio state and maybe with some playing time kids develop and, and by the way did you hear the thing gary parish was rattling off with matt norlander the other day about all these kids that left kentucky and are just tearing it up at their stops now well i mean i didn't hear it but yeah, it was from last year. Um, I'm sure Kentucky fans know that list by heart. But um, anyway, yeah, it, it's that that just adds to the noise. Well, yeah, I mean, look, somebody brought up the offense, and you can describe it in whatever ways you want to describe it. As I said the other night, they were they were talking a lot about how efficient it was from the statistical standpoint. But as we said all year long, if you watch this team, they're not statistically good, or not they're not efficient on offense. Um, they're just not, and we've always – we've talked about that a lot this season. We're just not a fan of how they run their offense, and I don't feel like it's really evolved much over the years, and I think that's one of the biggest problems. And, yeah, we, we've talked about that quite a bit, and, um, yeah, that, that's an issue. There's no doubt about it. So, um, I mean, look, I – Cal, the players, I mean, you're right. That will be a discussion that's had the rest of the season, but – as I said before, it starts at the top to me. And and were we here? Here's here. Actually, I was thinking about this earlier, Chris. Were we that wrong on evaluating the talent on this Kentucky team for them to be in the spot that they're in right now to justify them being here? I don't. I don't think we were. Not saying well, we're always you, right, but we're not. The, we're not you, the only. You ones, know. You know the stuff I look at. You know how much detail I I so. put into our preseason prep. Our discussion was okay. Is it going to be Arkansas? Is it going to be? Tennessee, is he going to be Kentucky? Is he going to be Auburn at number one? And I remember we talked on the phone off podcast and I said to you, I said, I look at the experience they've got. They're bringing in great freshmen again, but you look at the pieces they have. They have shooters, you know, two transfers and Reeves and Frederick who had put up numbers at other stops at major stops. Well, one of them in, in Illinois State, the, the Valley's a pretty decent league. And he was, was he the player of the year there? Who's that? Reeves? Antonio Reeves. Um, I mean, I assume he was probably right there. If if not, first I team at least. Him. I mean, Sheboy and Wheeler, we we know about that. Yeah, I mean, I, I looked at everybody's roster and looked at it heavily. Who's got a lot of experience? Who's got guys that have done it before? And I said to you, I said you've got a team of players that have been very accomplished in their careers, and you've got a coach who understands how to put it together. And to me, that was that made them the best team preseason. It's not playing out that way, but yeah, there's no excuse for this. It's always a you know the answer is always more complicated. The answer is usually a combination of things. Could be a combination of both, as as I think Ashton pointed out. And you know, there's some other people kind of commenting on some of this stuff. And yeah, I mean, you know what? This may be part of it too. I mean, hey, you know, if you I still think it's a matter of, you know, look, there's frustration on both sides. We can't, we can't ignore that. I mean, is Cal probably this frustrated with some of his players? Yeah. And I mean, that's the My thing, fault. right? Is, is Cal frustrated with some of his players? Probably. Some of his players frustrated with Cal? Probably. But that's what happens when you get to this point. And so, I mean, I, I think that's just, that's the nature of where it is. And um, yeah. And, and someone else pointed out, like, maybe Kentucky just got beat by a team that, made shots. Yeah, that's exactly what happened. But I think the the bigger point is the expectations for Kentucky basketball and we're not saying those are the ones necessarily set by by us, but fan base has every right to demand more of where the program's at given the amount of money they're paying and, you know, all this this other stuff that goes along with it. So, I mean, it's it's Kentucky. Like we like I get it, guys. Like as we said, it's the SEC's gotten better and all this, but the name Kentucky is still going to carry 
the weight that it's carried for years and years and years, because that's what the program has built traditionally. And they expect to, to do more than they have. And they expect not to lose these kind of games. So, well, there's been a lot of talk about him in the Texas job, but now if you're Texas, if this thing falls apart, how excited are you to, to take that on? If I'm Texas, I give him a one-year contract and tell him, bring all those guys in your recruiting class next season. Let's see how it plays out, and we'll we'll decide from there. Um, that's that's me, but that's why I'm not in that job, right? So, yeah. I mean, <laughs> that, that would work out great, I think, for both parties to see if it works out. But um, I don't know, man. It's uh, it's wild, but yeah. I mean, yeah, let's, people are pointing out some of the other stuff about yeah, Kentucky's defense. I mean, that's the thing too, right? Something else we pointed out in some of our other videos. By the way, if you're joining in here, there's a lot of people here. Hit that subscribe button. We do SEC basketball videos literally every day during the week. So um, we preview every game. We react to every game. Like we don't just do this for Kentucky losing a game they shouldn't. Um, yeah, I mean, look, some of the other stuff was about Kentucky's defense has slipped. It's not just their offense. Like the, the bigger thing lost in all of the discussion about the offense is their defense has slipped. Yeah. Big time. And as we've said, Chris, over the years, when they've had teams that maybe don't meet their expectations offensively, they've been able to make up for it defensively. But it's just not there right now. And as we said earlier, South Carolina hit some tough shots, hit more threes than they have all season. But still, I mean, yeah. So, yeah, it's a good, good night for South Carolina, right? Rattler's coming back. Well, it's going to like, yeah, you got, you got all kinds of fun stuff for the Gamecocks tonight. So. We'll talk about that soon, I'm sure. Yeah, congratulations to Carolina. If you're a Carolina fan this and you missed it, um, you should be proud of your team tonight. Did a mm -hmm. lot of things well. A lot of kids stepped up and had big nights in Lexington. 28 game winning streak. Who was the last time to beat or the last team to beat Kentucky in Lexington? Hmm. They will answer that in the comments very quickly, I'm sure. They will know. Um, My guess is going to be is LSU. 20 maybe one of will wade's know. teams florida was it florida i don't know somebody will answer it. so you know I, I bet it must have been the covid year right it had to be i think it have been florida if it was that year that's the game i'm thinking about but somebody may have been in the year before i don't remember aaron i completely agree with i'm full of this there you go florida um the 27th fully on board with well, the idea, 90s right? uniforms tonight and those need to go no, man. Bring back the entire 90s no. style. Maybe that's it. We've talked about Bring this. Bring back Rick Patino. There you Cal go. Cal just needs to decide, that's you know it. what? We're going to go full Alabama. We're just going to go up and down the floor. We're going to play with the fastest tempo in the country, and let's just see what happens because it's better than what's happening right now. So um, so there you go. I'm, I'm fully on board with this idea. <laughs> I'm half joking, by the way. Only half. So, all right, guys, we're going to wrap this up soon. were, my goodness. They were fun to watch. Fun to watch. Yeah. Um, all right, this is going to be like your two-minute warning here because we're going to wrap this up. we got other games to watch and do our videos on those for tomorrow. Um, but we do appreciate all you guys joining. As we said, hit that subscribe button. If you look in the description of this video, you can also sign up with our friends at Brothrow. Chris, give Brothrow a quick mention. And um, yeah, we can um, head on out after that. If you like betting 11 to win 10, bro throw is, or, well, that stinks. Bro throw lets you bet win to 10, 10 to win 10. I'll tell you what else stinks. Um, I'll keep going. I'm just kidding. <laughs> you talked about it. Let you money. bet in all 50 states um, because bro throw isn't the house. Betters have a fair chance at winning. It's the only sports betting platform that doesn't take a cut of every bet. No deposits, no minimum bets, no need to connect your bank account. Betters pay each other directly. It's a hassle-free sign-up process that lets you get in the action in seconds. Go to brothrow.com forward slash SE14 and get in on the fun. And when, when you get there, ask to join our private group. We'll let you in and, and have some fun there. Click the link in the description, folks. And, yeah, someone's pointing out, SC Scout guy. Bandy's keeping it close with Tennessee. If you watched our video. Yeah, I'm said, keeping an eye on that. <laughs> we said, don't don't be shocked because Bandy's kept everybody close this season. So Good oh, and bad. Tennessee. Yeah, so we'll see. Um, all right. Well, Chris, uh, Kentucky fans, I know a lot of you in here talking about a lot of different things. We appreciate your input. We appreciate your thoughts. Um, again, hit subscribe button. We're obviously going to have a lot more 
to talk about with this this week. Um, we're just doing this as a live stream afterwards because we know a lot of people wanted to get in on the action. Um, so hit that subscribe button. A lot more SEC ba- daily SEC basketball videos. Most days, multiple videos per day going up cover covering SEC basketball. Um, so we appreciate all all the comments. I'm, I'm just I know I've missed some, but looking down the line here, you know, Chris, David, everybody, Aaron, like I'm just all sorts of people weighing in with their comments. William, Ty, I mean, there's just there's so many people. We can't get to all the comments on this one, but we do appreciate you guys chiming in. Chris, we're going to start our SEC basketball live streams. These are going to be regular. Um, mm. First one, I think we're going to start Thursday night. Is that right? Yeah, was it 8 or 8.30? I think it's 8. Uh, it's right? going to be 8. Yeah, it's not going to be 8.30. Okay. I'll be in bed by then. Um, football is no, 8 30 live streams on Monday night. That's a new thing too. And then when something crazy happens like this, we will sometimes yep. just do an impromptu one. That's it. So again, we appreciate you guys. Uh, we're going to go watch uh, the other games and, um, we'll have a lot more to talk about with Kentucky Cal and, um, yeah, a lot more thoughts on that, uh, here on the channel. So. Chris? Yeah, thank you for watching. Uh, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button. It really helps us out. We were 300 people on our channel this time of year ago, and we've grown quickly. So, uh, and a lot of you guys out there in the chat have been a part of that. So, again, thank you all for watching. We'll see you Thursday night, 8 Central, on our live stream. We'll have stuff Wednesday morning, more reaction to the Florida LSU game, which we didn't talk to, Vandy. Tennessee, which I'm watching now. Which we could have I'll another live them. stream on. If Andy beats well, Tennessee, we who could, knows? Hey, if Andy beats so. Tennessee, we'll do a live stream. How about that? Wow. Yeah. And then, um, oh, and, and then Thursday morning, we'll do a reaction to Wednesday night's games, unless there's another shocker in which we might just do them Wednesday night. So in any case, uh, thank you for watching. Thank you to our sponsor, Bro Throw. Again, see that link at the bottom of the screen. He's Blake Lovell. I'm Chris Lee. We're Southeastern 14. And we'll see you again soon.